you love him? Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Yes. Did you get an opportunity to touch him today? Yes. Has he touched you today? Yes. 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 How many of you can use another touch? Oh, yeah. I know I can. Oh, yeah. I'm going to make some decisions this week, and I'm going to need his guidance. Yes. yes. I'm going to be around people that I'm going to need his help in. Yeah, yeah. And I need another touch. Come on. Yeah. Brother Harrison was speaking. Oh, yeah. um, I thought of a scripture, and Brother uh, Sister Roller, you're going to have to help me. I think it's Mark 8, 20, in the 20, 20, type 22, I think it is, in the 20s. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Jesus, and he comes into a town. Turn to somebody and say, Jesus is coming. Jesus, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. That's it. That's Jesus it. How about that? Here's something strange. <laughs> and he cometh, and he cometh to the Savior. And they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. I can't speak for you, but I was brought here. Come on. Amen. I wasn't led here. I didn't get in no great epiphany in my bed at night or in the elevator or underneath the car or any other time. I was brought here. John, Teresa, was I not brought here and dropped off? I was brought here. Literally, I had grocery bags that said catch. Back then we had paper only, church. We didn't have a choice, plastic or paper. You got paper. I was loaded up in paper bags and I was brought to a, my father's house and dropped off. And she said, I'm done. I can't do nothing with him anymore. And I didn't know it, but God had me right where he wanted me. God was working the whole time. God was leading me right where he wanted me the whole time. I didn't know it. I was looking at it with natural eyes. I'm not sure y'all knew it. Y'all may have been looking at it with natural eyes, too. I thought one's going to kill me and one doesn't even know me to kill me. But he said no. He said, he said, go put your stuff in the house. I walked in, I looked right at Teresa, scared to death, and said, hi, I'm Larry. She said, I remember you. She said, John, we need more milk. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> but God was doing something. God was doing something. I didn't see it, and I looked at it with natural vision, and looked at it with natural eyes, and I thought, oh, yeah, I'm just going to, wait till they get a load of me. That was my attitude at 14 years old. I knew more. I could do more. They outsmarted them. They didn't know nothing about teenagers today. In 1978, 79. So 79, I think it was when I came. I was blind. I didn't see a thing. I didn't see God. I didn't see the Holy Ghost. I certainly didn't see this way. Didn't know anything about this way. I knew one man when he left, when he got divorced from my mom, I knew one man and I seen another different man. Totally different. That's all I knew was God shining light through him. That's all I knew. He would come to pick up Tracy and it wasn't the same man that walked out of the house. That's all I knew about this way. But I sat. Most of the time, Matt, Tim, because we were made to sit. Parents don't do that anymore. They got HRS and laws and child protective services and all kinds of stuff. Children can call them, call them up. They're making me sit in church. They're thumping my ear, making me shut up in church. Come get them, they're bad parents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can say thank you. Because it wasn't five, six months later. Drug infested. Lost young man right there. God said, what are you waiting for? Audibly. That's the first time and the last time I've ever heard an audible voice from God. The first time and the last time. And I turned to the guy. I turned to the kid sitting next to me. And I said, what would you say? And he said, I didn't say nothing. And the... The quartet at the time were singing the lighthouse. Yeah. He said, what are you waiting on? That's what he said, and I wrestled with that. I wrestled with that in my head. I wrestled. I wrestled. When they left Egypt, 
in the 14th chapter of Exodus, when they got came to an impassable point, the enemy was chasing them. I sat right there with those words that in my head with the enemy chasing me. Chasing me. I was in an impassable. I didn't see how God was going to do anything. I didn't know how God was going to do it. I didn't know what he was going to do. How he was going to do it. When he was going to do it. But I knew I had the enemy quick on my heels. Quick on my heels. I just stepped out. Moses said, Moses said, there's two things you can do when the enemy's chasing you. You can go back, which is easy. That's what they wanted to do. They're not to tell them the Egypt say that. Oh, you brought us out here in the desert to die. Moses, it's your fault. When things come against us, we run into obstacles in the church. First thing you want to do is blame somebody. It's your fault. It's, when they were blaming the, the leader of the church. I wonder how many times Brother Marlowe heard that. Brother Marlowe, it's your fault. We want to blame somebody. The enemy's coming behind me, and I don't see how God's going to do anything. We got a big river in front of me. I got a big obstacle in front of me. I don't know how. What's got Why? We can't do nothing with the river. All they had to do was shut up. <laughs> you know how many times I told myself to shut up? You know how many times somebody else just told me to shut up and see? Shut up and see. Just watch and see. Stand. Stand. You can go back like they wanted to do. Or God said later on down here in Exodus, said go forward. Go forward. You can go back or you can go forward. Amen. It's your decision. Right, man. We're all stuck with the decision. And the value of the decision. Right. I'm going to stay right here. Yeah, brother. Go to the next verse. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to go sideways there, folks. I felt like Brother Rhodes there for a second. <laughs> and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. Right. There's three blind men that Jesus healed in that body. He's on all three different ways. And I'll show you what God gave me this as three different paths to salvation. This one, I had to, he and this man had to be led. He didn't heal blind blind man. Tim talked about the other night that way, did he? Yeah. He healed him right there. Mm. Some people get it. Some yes. people have to get, to get that from God. I couldn't. Yeah. God didn't choose to lead me that way. Right. He had to take me by the hand yeah. and lead me away from all the negativity. Separate me from everybody I was around. Set me, separate me from family. It's blood. Separate me from the environment that I was in. The people I was around. The people that said, you can't, you won't, you shouldn't. It's a lie. Yeah. Jesus had to take me by the hand. Yeah. No, you, your mom kicked you out. No, that was Jesus taking me by the hand. Yeah. Yeah. You can look at a negative all you want. I want to see the positive side of that. Yeah. Had that not happened, I wouldn't have been here. And had that not been here, perhaps I would have never gotten the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Jesus, for leading me by the hand. You've been led by the hand. But you have to be led by the hand. Let him lead you, church. Let him take you by the hand. There's a reason why he's taking you from where you are. Right. He was taking him somewhere to heal you. Yes. There may have been doubters here, man. The Bible doesn't say he took him by the hand and led him out of town because he said he'd done it. It's up to the interpretation of the preacher or the whoever wants to make the ones who use it. I'm using it for me personally. He had to physically lead me from what I was in. I had to get away from all of it. And trust me, I wasn't around it. I don't need going out little old green house. I wasn't around it. We was in church or in school. You hear that? We was in church or in school. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. School bus, trucking around all the way to Arcadia with no air and windows down. Yeah. Singing and praising the Lord all yeah. the way there. Thank God those days. Remember those? Yes, sir. Yeah. We was in church or we in school or sleeping. Yeah. yeah. I thank you, Lord. Thank you. I had to go that path. Right. Yeah. I had to. I needed that, Brother John talked about. I needed that personally. God may not have been doing anything with anybody at that time, but he was doing something with me. He was leading me out. And I didn't even know it. But I was blind. 
And when he had spit on his eyes, hallelujah, I preached on that once already. And he put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw aught. Yeah, Tim. Do you think Jesus didn't know what that man saw? That's what you said the other night. He knew already, but he had to confess. That man had to say with his own mouth, I do not see clearly. How many people, millions of people, are in church and they don't see clearly? I'm not faulting them for that. Don't get me wrong. If I was naturally blind, I'm sorry if I'm going over time, folks. If I was naturally blind, darkness, Brother Harrison, darkness, Brother Rhodes, if I was in darkness and I saw a glimmer of light and I saw just barely shadows, I would be happy. Yeah. I would be happy. And I knew darkness up until then. So the little bit of light, hey, I'll take it. Amen. How many people get that one initial touch and take it, leave it, I'm fine, right there, I'm happy. I never had anything, now I've got a little bit of something, I'm not going to ask for any more, I'm not going to admit that I'm totally out, I'm not going to admit that I'm totally healed, I'm not going to admit, I'm not going to admit, I'm not going to admit. How many people are walking around in church that condition today? I don't want to walk that way. And when he touches me again, I want another touch. When he touches me again, I want another touch. When he does something in my life, I want him to do something else. I'm greedy when it comes to God. Because I know where I was and I know where I am. Oh, don't leave me where I'm at. Some of y'all might sit here tonight and say, he's a different than he was in 1979. Well, let me tell you, 30 years from now, I'm going to be different from what I am today. Amen. I'm not stopping just for a little bit. I don't care how good it is, how sweet it is, where I came. Oh, yeah, I was in the street. Now the church gave me a home. I'm happy. No, there's much more. Oh, there's much more. Oh, there's much more. Oh, my electric bill was turned off. The church gave me the money. Pay my electric bill. I'm happy. No. No. no! There's more! Yes. There's more! Yes. And all you got to do is admit that he ain't done! Amen. Right. Don't ever sit in the church and think he's done with you! Yes. He can't do anymore! Because so I'm telling you, that's the enemy right on your heels. Yes. Right. Look, when you see me praising God, the crazy praise I talked about one night, I'm praising him for things that my pastor don't even know about. I'm praising him for things my wife don't know about. I'm praising him for things that nobody else knows about, that I know about, that Jesus brought me from, brought me to it, brought me through it. That I know about. Praise the Lord if you've been there. You're lifting your hands for something that nobody knows, but it was impossible. There was no way you were going to get through it. There was no way you were going to round it. And one day, you stood still, you held your peace. Come on. See, just opened up. You've been there. Am I the only one that ever prayed that way? Jesus, if you'll just do this for me now. Am I the only one that said, God, I promise. Huh? Huh? Lord, if you'll just bring me down. Lord, if you'll just bring me up, I promise. That's truth, folks. I'm preaching with my heart. I've been right there. I promise. I failed him. He, he did it. He fixed it. And I failed him. But that mercy. Mercy. That was mercy. But God kept his hand right on me. It's all right. You're not the first one that's ever done that, Myrtle Larry. And I took the cross. I took the cross for you. Yeah. But when you do mess up the cross, Come on. when you do mess up the mercy, yeah. when you do mess up the grace, yeah. take back a hold of my hand. Yeah. If you got to, grab a hold of it. That's it. Just be willing to admit that he ain't done. You ain't nowhere near where you're supposed to be. Not a one of us. Not a one from the top to the newest. Come on. It's not where God's done for them. That's right. I need another touch. Hey, Tim. Hallelujah, Lord. Y'all figure it out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, man. Come on. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Church, I can't speak for you, but I want to touch him before I leave. Come on. Come on, Lord. 
I want to touch him one more time. Do you want to touch him one more time? Yes. You can. You can. And if Jesus has got you by the hand, if he's grabbed your hand, and you know it's Jesus, take it. Go where he takes you. That blind man never asked, where are you taking me, Lord? He never said, but what about... But I, what, I, I believe you don't see the blind man saying anything. You let the Lord take you. Church, let him take you. Hold on to that hand tight. Let him lead you where he's going to take you. Just trust me. He'll do it. He'll do it. I don't know how long the walk was to get out of that city. It may have been a five-minute walk. It may have been a five-hour walk. It doesn't say. It just say, let him out. I don't know how long your walk's going to be. I can tell you how long my walk it was. It's still going on. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. From 1979 to 2013, my walk is still going on. Oh, it's been rough. I've been in impossible places, and I've blamed everybody I could blame other than myself. I think I blamed you one time, Brother Harris. Brother Ruth, I know I blamed you a bunch. <laughs> Church, look, it's God. It's God doing something in your life. And he that has begun a good work. How's that go? Shall also perform it. I can't make that promise, Brother Mike, but God can. I can't promise you that I'll start to help you and can continue to help you, but he made the promise. He begun it. He will finish it to the end, but just hold on to the end. I don't know.